Okay, this short video is about performing suction, how you do that um, on somebody. Um, key thing to remember is that you always pre-oxygenate and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, uh, this person onto an oxygen mask once I've untangled it. It's a rebreathe bag, they should be getting 100%. So here we go, sir. Some oxygen for you. This would of course be attached to the oxygen up here. And it would be at 10 litres or more, whatever was required in order to get 100%. Okay, so that's attached. So I then need to prepare my, um, my suction equipment. So this is where I, I'm, I'm going to turn this on and then I'm going to turn it off again just because it's so noisy. So I want between 80 and 120 um, millimetres of mercury. So I'm going to just test my machine and make sure that that is the range I have. And that's going up to 150. That's going to 150, which is, which is rather high, so I might just turn it down a notch. I would leave it running, but it's noisy, so I've just turned it off. At this point, what I would then do is I would then put the catheter together with the suction equipment. Now, in a ward scenario, you've got suction here, um, and it's fitted to a, an underwater sealed unit so that we're not getting um, sputum moving through and into the mechanics of the vacuum. So there should be a cylinder here that will catch whatever it is I'm clearing off this person's chest or from their mouth. But we, we don't have that, we don't have a vacuum here, so I'm using this as my suction equipment. So at this point, um, this, remembering that this is a clean procedure, I would then put on another glove. So you do this in a um, with a clean glove. It's not sterile, but you want it to be as clean as you possibly can be. Now that hand is, shouldn't touch anything. I take out my catheter, I tuck it underneath my arm, I pull it out, I catch it. It has touched nothing apart from my clean glove. Now at this point, I'm ready to do my suctioning. I've explained it to my patient. I explained that it's maybe not the most comfortable thing in the world, but I'm going to be as quick as I possibly can be. So I, I take off the oxygen now. I've got two choices here. I can either go down the nose, so I need the person's head back a little, and you go up one nostril until you feel, oh, I can't go down that one. Okay, you go up as far as you can, and then, when you reach the point at the back, you aim almost straight into that person's head. Almost straight into that person's head, aiming for the tip of the ear on the opposite side. And there we go, into the throat. And I can see the tube at the back of the throat there. Now, there's a block in the nose that's sometimes difficult to get by. And actually, this mannequin, I can go no further than that. It hasn't got a connected larynx. But at this point, once I've got past the block in the nose, there is another block, and that is just above the larynx, and it's formed by the tongue. And, and so at this point, I'd be saying, can you just try and cough for me? Just clear your airway a little bit, so that it gives me an opportunity to go down into the open and unprotected trachea. Right, I can't go any further with this model, but at the point when he does cough or he does take a deep breath in, then I can slide in with my airway. Once I'm down as far as I can and I'm sure I'm not touching the carina, then I can apply my section and come out. And what will happen is you know you're in the right place because this person will cough a lot. And I need to come out very gently, just sliding that out, taking no longer than 15 seconds because basically he's coughing and not breathing in that time. Great. And then as soon as I've done, I put that back on. And maybe I have an assistant here so I'm not right I'm not wiping my hand that is touched the suction catheter all over his face. 
So I then take off the suction catheter and then I can dispose of it nice and neatly like that. Okay, so it's nice and clean. All right, there is, I have another choice though when I'm actually suctioning and I can go down using a Giedel Airway. All right, this is, this is a Giedel Airway. The size, the size is one to four and this says it's two. You know you've got the right size for somebody when, if you hold the Giedel Airway by their chin, it reaches the corner of their jaw. So you can see that this one is actually a little small and that this one, which is size four, the biggest that we do, is actually much better. That's the size for this man. The thing that you need to really remember is that when you're inserting an airway, it goes in that way. The, the reason why we don't put them in that way is that if you catch the tip of the tongue, you can push the tongue backwards. So it goes in upside down to the middle of the mouth and then you turn it around and slide it home. So it might be that, uh, I think when you're using an airway, it's much easier to have two people here. And to be honest, because of the uh, capacity for this to touch the, um, the sides of the throat, the pillars of four C's at the back of the throat and make people gag, then actually this is perhaps a technique that's better performed inside line. So with some help inside line, it might be that I insert that and then apply my two minutes or so of 100% oxygen to raise their sacs. I might just reuse this so as I'm not wasting um, suction catheters. The thing to remember with Metiman is that actually you can't go down all of the way. So um, I might just put my hand back in that. I need you to imagine that this is all clean. I'll just pop that back in. You would never ever do this in practice, okay? Um, so here I am. Okay, I have my airway in place. I've given him two minutes and it's exactly the same thing. You take a hold. Now there is another way of doing it. You can actually create a loop like that and then you can feed it out. You can do either way. The only thing I'd say is don't drop these on the floor um, because uh, you, know, you, can, you can slip on them or other people arriving if you need help, um, then they can slip on them. So it's better to, to look after them carefully. So now I can take it off. I've still got this out cleanly. I'm still not letting that touch anything other than my gloved hand. Um, and then down the airway we go. Now the thing is uh, with Meti Man is that I can't go all the way into his lungs because that's where all the kit is. So I'm going to stop there, but I'm going to imagine that under, with people normally what would happen is that again you still got to get past the laryngeal block. Um, you, tipping the head back a little bit might help. I get past the throat by asking them to take a deep breath, try and do a cough for me, have a good cough, and as soon as they cough, you can go down into the unprotected trachea. It should be open at that point. Uh, but because this is Metiman, I can't go all the way down, but normally you would go down as far as you felt you could or until you met a resistance. Come away just one centimeter, and they're marked on here. You can see the gradings, the distance gradings, so I can come away a centimeter and then apply my suction for again, no more than 15 seconds coming out. You don't need to twist it, just pull it out nice and gently. And then as soon as you've done, we can reapply the oxygen. So I'm just gonna let that sit there while I take this off. Same thing, wrap it around, pull it off and dispose of it cleanly. So those are the two ways in which you would actually suction somebody um, without, um, one with a giggle airway um, down the mouth, we don't normally suction um, just down the mouth because there is a tendency, that's it, just sliding that out. You don't need to twizzle it around when you're taking it out. You just slide it forward. The reason why we don't suction just like that is because they're, they're, people can bite on the tube and then um, you, you get it stuck. I mean, it, there is something called a yanker sucker, uh, which is a hard metal, um, uh, suction 
tube of the kind that you probably met in the dentist. And you can just perhaps pop that to the back of people's throats to clear things out. Uh, but, um, but it's firm, it's rigid plastic, um, where these are rather softer and the, uh, the tendency is for people to bite on them and that's, uh, it's not good for them or you really, so, um, so we tend not to do that. Only go down the mouth with an airway. My, my preferred option is actually down the nose because um, it means actually that you can still keep giving them a little bit of oxygen while you're doing it. Um, you can put it nearer and also um, you, once you're at the back of the pharynx, you're right over the trachea, you're much more likely to actually not have it swallowed. Because that's what the larynx does really, it's the point at which things either go into your airway or into your stomach. And so um, you've, got a, you've got it much more poised in the right place at the back of the nose. The only difficulty is this block here, so you need to be careful of the size of the catheter you're using and your technique. Just go up as far as you can and then aim back, uh, almost 90 degrees into the head of that person. So that's all I'm going to say about um, airways and nose, but there's one more thing, and that is uh, suctioning through an airway. I'm just going to put in this tracky. So back in, here's our, here's our space in Metiman for the tracky tube. I'm just going to push that in. There it is. So that would be sitting nicely there, nice and sealed. Suction looks remarkably similar. Now, naturally, I can't, I need a tracky mask. And what I would do here is there'd be a, there would be a mask that's fitted just for the trachea, a, a tracheal tube. So that would be applied. And I would make sure I turn it up to 100% before we actually did the technique. It actually makes it lots, lot easier when you've got um, a, a, either an endotracheal tube or a tracheostomy tube because all of those blocks, either in the nose or at the back of the mouth, they are gone. You can just put the tube down, all right? So um, it's exactly the same thing. I'm double gloved now. I take hold of my tube and I choose one way to take it out that's clean, doesn't matter which. And now I'm ready to do some suction. So that's been on for a couple of minutes. My suction machine is on, I've tested it. Now, remember this is Meti Man and not just a person. I mean, not a person. Um, I can't go down as far with him as I would a normal person. So. Um, I'd, I'd normally be expecting to maybe use something like a hand span, hand span, so up to something like 20 centimetres, uh, but I will only put it down to about 10, so as I don't upset the mechanism. And then I would imagine that, that I've hit the carina, I'd come away, and then suction. You never suction going up and down, never. Only ever suction on the way out. If you feel as if you've got something stuck, you can sometimes release the pressure and put it back on. Stay a little in the same place, but don't move it up and down. That can be very irritating. It can, what you've got here at the end are little holes um, and the mucosal membrane can kind of get caught up in those little holes and tear. You, you damage the lining of the airways if you're not careful. So down as far as you can to the carina, but for Metiman only 10 centimeters or so. Then apply your suction gently and withdraw in less than 20 seconds. Yep, 15, 10 to 15 ideally. Okay, and that is the end of the suctioning video.